Hey everyone, Zeph and Moses Blacksburg here, and I'm coming to you from my office, but this is a little bit different of a backdrop than what you're probably used to. Reason being, I was just on the Black Magic live stream where they released new equipment and <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, I nearly need my pants. This is what we've been waiting for for so long when it comes to the Blackmagic A10 Mini Pro. And what I've done is I went through the entire live stream. I took notes so that I could give you a recap of everything that was announced, including all the nitty gritty details. And the biggest thing I'm just going to say is, let's just, let's dive right in. I, I'm just, I'm so excited. I, I can't hold it in. I couldn't take the time to set up the studio. Like I had to make this video to get it out to you. So here is the big update. I'm going to run through the list. I had to write it down and print it out here. So just bear with me as I run through it all. So for starters, there's going to be a software update that will allow you to tether a smartphone to the ATEM Mini Pro and Mini Pro ISO using a USB cable uh, for a cellular connection. So you can now stream to the internet, whether it's you know going live on Facebook or going live on YouTube, using your cell phone's data plan with a simple USB-C cable out of the A10 Mini and into your phone. Next up is a clean switch between Ethernet and tethering with a phone. So let's say you're plugged in to stream over Ethernet with your A10 Mini Pro, but you also plug in your phone to tether. If one connection goes out, you can actually unplug that connection and it will switch right over and keep going almost flawlessly. He demoed it on the live stream and it was pretty clear that there was like a, a quick little blip in the live stream, but nothing that would ultimately impact the show. So that was really exciting to see. He just unplugged the cable so like you could be streaming on Ethernet and as long as your phone was plugged in for tethering, you could unplug the Ethernet if say your wired internet goes down and it'll pick back up with the tethered internet connection or vice versa. So you could unplug the tethered connection and it'll switch right over to the Ethernet connection. Very exciting stuff going on here. You can switch to a lower frame rate. So you could switch to something like 24p instead of 60p if you needed a lower bit rate because of your connection in using your tethered device. Uh, so this is all coming through the ATEM update 8.6. It's going to be free and it supports the Pro and the ISO models. This does not support the ATEM Mini because it does not have a built-in encoder. Okay, next up, this is like probably what I'm most excited for. All of you have been waiting for this for a very long time. The new ATEM Mini Extreme with a huge control panel, huge with a lot more control. So I'm going to run down the list. I'm sorry, I'm looking down. I'm reading off this list that I've got here of notes because there were so many new updates and exciting things with this. Okay, so first of all, this uses a bigger power supply. It has a built-in encoder, just like the smaller models, and it has two USB connections. So you could plug in for webcam use, but you could also plug in a hard drive to be recording to a hard drive at the same time. It also has two HDMI outputs that act as aux outputs. So you could be outputting your live show or your program feed over one HDMI output, and then you could have your multi-view going out over the second HDMI output. <laughs> Mind blown, right? This is like what we've been asking for this whole time, but because it's an aux output, that doesn't have to be a multi-view. It could be your program feed and then maybe like PowerPoint slides because you need to send them over to a projector or a monitor somewhere. So that was just mind blowing right there on the spot. Okay, now there's eight HDMI inputs, eight HDMI inputs two three and a half millimeter mic inputs like usual that's been on the ATEM Mini from the start and a headphone headphone output at three and a half millimeters. So not a quarter inch that you see on many headphones, but a three and a half will definitely do the job there. So kudos to you, Blackmagic, that's going to be huge. We can now monitor the audio for our live stream directly out of the ATEM Mini or ATEM Mini Extreme uh, without having to worry about, you know, having an external monitor plugged in and plugging headphones into that. So huge, fantastic uh, decision there. I applaud you guys, job well done. Now, 
that's not even the biggest thing that excites me. The next thing is there's now a downstream keyer button directly on the panel of the A10 Mini Extreme instead of needing to go into the software to turn on your downstream keyer. There's six macro buttons on the panel, so you can actually set them up to be anything you want. You can build your own macros that are there and ready to go, so you can just press the button right there on the panel. It has two DVEs, so you can actually start doing uh, kind of like not just the regular picture in picture in the way that we think of it, but you can start doing like the side by side type views, those boxed views that we're seeing on streaming platforms like StreamYard and Hopin and some other platforms that you see. Uh, Ecamm Live also is doing this. It has a select bus, so you can now change the source and the destination. Um, you can select the dip source when you have a dip transition. So, you know, some of you might do like a dip to black or a dip to a color. You can now select that source for that transition right on the panel itself. You no longer have to go into the Blackmagic software to change that. You still can, of course, but you don't have to. So just I'm, I'm, can you tell I'm excited? <laughs> All right, so here's a couple other things that we have moving forward. Um, so from the panel, uh, you can adjust the camera settings. So if you have Blackmagic cameras plugged into your A10 Mini Extreme, you can go ahead and adjust things like gain and focus directly from the panel itself. You don't have to go into that software control. You're right on the A10 Mini itself. So that's super cool. That's only with the Blackmagic cameras as of right now, uh, but you no longer need the software control. You can just do it directly. If you press and hold the focus button, it enabled a one-touch autofocus. So that was a neat feature that they showed off on the live stream as well. Audio controls are very similar to the other A10 mini models, so keeping in line with what we're already used to. Uh, there's buttons for headphone levels, so you've got a mute and a reset button if you need to mute your headphone output, but you also have a volume up and down so you can change your headphone volume. Uh, that's just a really nice feature to have in there, so thank you, thank you Blackmagic for adding that one in. A multi-view. So multi-view can now show up to 16 views and you can change your sources to customize the multi-view as you wish. This is amazing now that we have eight HDMI inputs and two HDMI outputs. Uh, you now have two media players. So before we were limited to one media player that held 20 still frames and Blackmagic was nice enough to upgrade the software so that we could keep those frames saved into the unit uh, even after we turned it off. So thanks for doing that and listening to us, but now you've added in two media players. So this is huge. Now I'm thinking about live streams where I could separate things like lower thirds graphics on one slot one, one side of the media player and then like another media player could have uh, my hold slides, my slides for the show or any other graphics, things like a bug that goes up in the corner, um, any number of things that'll help out my live shows. Now, this is the biggest one of all and I'm like, am I tearing up? <laughs> They've included Super Source in the A10 Mini Extreme. So those of you that have used the bigger Blackmagic models, you'll know what Super Source is, but you can now get four video sources as separate DVEs in a layer stack. This means that I could potentially do a quad box, four video signals on screen at one time. So my mind is already racing, thinking that I could start to bring in additional laptops that are sitting in on a Zoom call and bring in additional uh, virtual guests and speakers into their boxes on screen. Basically, it's giving us the ability to do things that software like StreamYard and Ecamm Live was doing, but we can now do that with hardware a little bit more reliably. And also these are things that uh, other more expensive devices like the TriCaster were doing, but you know, if you don't wanna spend 30 grand on a TriCaster, I don't blame you. So this is just huge in general. And it actually has support for a background graphic behind all of the DVEs and a foreground graphic in front of them all. So this means what I could do is I could have a branded graphic as my background for let's say a virtual event. I can have my four boxes, right? that have each of my four guests, maybe some of them are live and in person, maybe some of them are virtual, but then I can also overlay a frame over that too. So if I wanna kind of decorate my boxes with something nicer than kind of the typical black outline that goes around them, I can now create a graphic that becomes this frame overlay over all of it. 
There are four upstream keyers. Uh, four cameras can have chroma key simultaneously. So you can do things like you could have virtual sets. So if you're making backdrops to use uh, with a green screen, you can have multiple camera angles. And as long as they're not moving camera angles for the most part, you can actually key out the backgrounds and give multiple different angles for people. I'm seeing this as a great implementation for when you can have someone come into your studio for a virtual event and you need to place them inside a virtual set to make it look just a little bit different than being in that studio setup. Um, this is also compatible with the ATEM 1ME Advanced Panel and the con Camera Control Panel. The price for the ATEM Mini Extreme, yes. duh, drum roll please, is $999. Mind blown again. So under $1,000 for the A10 Mini Extreme, but of course, there's one more thing they threw out there. There is a A10 Mini Extreme ISO. Yes, that's right. An ISO, it can record eight simultaneous camera feeds and your program output feed. You still get that file in DaVinci so you can go ahead and re-edit it and readjust things later on, but you're getting eight no, nine because eight plus program simultaneous video feeds that are saved onto an SSD drive when plugged into one of the two USB-C slots that you now have on the A10 Mini Extreme ISO. So that comes in for just an additional $300 at $1,295 US dollars. So I'm going to pause. There are more things I'm going to announce in a second here, but what is going on, Blackmagic? Oh my God, you guys listen to everything that we've needed for so long. My mind is just racing about the possibilities because having eight inputs now, I'm thinking that with my studio setup, I've got multiple cameras here in studio, right? So I could have like one or two hosts or MCs of an event. And then I could take like a Zoom into multiple smaller, cheaper laptops or micro PCs and use those, uh, I can pin people full screen to the second monitor and bring that into the A10 Mini. So now we could do panels of up to four people and I could take people full screen. I just, the possibilities are really endless here. So I'm really, really liking what I see with this. I'm also realizing that when it comes to making my tutorials, I'm gonna be able to have more camera inputs and feeds so I can loop things out of my Shogun recorder and you can see what's being recorded or I can send a laptop into it. I can, I can. there's there's so much room for activities. Have you seen Step Brothers? We did it. We did it. It looks amazing. Look at that. That looks like what you would buy from a store. It should have been Look a at all this more space. So we much aerobics in here. So many activities. So back to the announcements. Uh, we're just over halfway through. There were some other really cool things that were announced. Uh, so on top of having the new A10 Mini Extreme and the A10 Mini Extreme ISO, there is now a new Blackmagic web presenter. So I've used the web presenter for a while to bring in a 720p feed over USB into my computer. The reason why I liked it was because it had an XLR input so I could send a mix minus audio feed back to my virtual guests with my virtual rig. But I've also liked it because it had an HDMI and an SDI input. It was like a two camera switcher. Now, the problem here with the this new one is they've actually removed the HDMI input. It's only SDI input. So I'm a little bit disappointed that they did that, uh, but you can still loop the SDI out or you can have an HDMI output as well. Uh, it's a 1080p webcam with USB-C connection and live streaming is now built in via internet. So this was huge. You can now live stream from the web presenter directly using the built-in encoder that that works within the web presenter. So that's another huge deal uh, for the web presenter. It's got AC power, a four pin backup power source. So if you're worried about the power going out, you wanna make sure things stay up and running, you can run two power sources into it. The Terranex front panel now comes standard because you actually need it in order to operate it. So good job Blackmagic not charging us another, I think $85 just for having an LCD panel and the control buttons. So it's about time you guys did that. But again, thank you for listening to us. There's a big on-air indicator on screen now with time code and a streaming bitrate monitor. It supports phone tethering for internet connectivity. So very similar to the ATEM models, you can now tether your phone to stream. 
The USB-C connection is not only on the back, but there's one on the front panel. So you can have it act as a webcam or you can use that for controlling it when it's rack mounted in a unit in case you can't reach the back of it. So this is really neat. There's a USB-C on the back and on the front of the web presenter now. Uh, and then you can also plug in a phone into the front panel to use for tethering. This is amazing. <laughs> Great job. So the video from a DaVinci timeline they were showing in the demo, and I'll have to do a little more research on this and what they were trying to do here, but you can take video from a DaVinci timeline and play it out over an Ultra Studio mini monitor and into the web presenter so that you could stream and edit to a client. I think there's some more ways that this can be used here, like maybe playing back a pre-recorded live stream, but I don't know what the usage case is going to be, at least in my position just yet. Just know that this is a feature that they were showing off in their presentation. The web presenter software shows a video display, sound levels, bitrate for streaming, uh, cache information, and more. And I'll show you a graphic on screen of what that looks like right now. And it's still a one third rack width. So you can rack mount this item and it comes in at $495. It includes the front panel. As someone who buys a lot of Blackmagic stuff, just know that it probably isn't going to come with a power cable. So just be prepared for that, as well as the new ATEM Mini Extreme ISO, Extreme and ISO, got to get used to saying that, probably do not come with the USB-C cable. So just be prepared to buy one of those as well. More stuff. That wasn't it. That was not all. New Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera 6K Pro, that's a mouthful, has generation five color science, a little bit bigger of a screen, an LCD screen that tilts up and down, a much brighter screen so that it's ideal for outdoor shooting. An upgraded battery that now uses the Sony MPF style battery. So I know a lot of people have complained about the Blackmagic cameras and battery life. This should hopefully help out with that. But there's also built in ND filters. The Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera also has the option for a Pro EVF with interchangeable eyepieces, depending on if you like using your right eye or your left eye for the viewfinder. Similar connections with the HDMI output. So it's probably something you're familiar with if you already have one of the other pocket cameras. There is an extra XLR connector, so you can plug in two XLR sources simultaneously and both have the option for phantom power. There's a new battery grip for longer shoots. So Blackmagic listened to all of you guys saying, hey, the battery life was not that great. They made a battery grip for you. And this is the Blackmagic Pocket Camera Battery Pro Grip, and it doesn't displace the internal battery. So you actually have, you can keep the internal battery and this screws into the bottom screw mount on the camera. And then it takes two NPF batteries as well. So you can include three NPF style batteries now in the Blackmagic camera. Uh, the battery tray slides out so you can hot swap, so you can be using the battery internally. If the two on the grip die out, you can just slide them out, pop two new ones in and keep going. Uh, so that doesn't have to be turned off in order to replace those batteries. And uh, like I said, it screws into the bottom thread mount on the camera. The camera itself is priced at $2,495. The EVF viewfinder comes in at $495. And the battery grip is $145, but is sold without NPF batteries. And they made it a point that they are very easy to find and very cheap to get online. Last but not least, there is a software update that's not quite ready for prime time, but all of the cameras will be getting a new RGB histogram so that you can see if you're clipping in a certain color. The Color Science Generation 5 that they came out with will be upgraded in all camera models in a free update, and that is coming along in update number 7.3, which should be available in one month. So two pages of notes for the entire recap there. Uh, sorry that this was a longer video, guys. I'm trying to recap what was a little over an hour long presentation in such a short period of time and hit on all the important notes. But if you liked this video today, please be sure to hit that like and subscribe button. And thank you so much for watching. And we'll see you hopefully next time with a, uh, a Blackmagic ATEM Mini Extreme or Extreme ISO. I've got one on pre-order. Kudos to you guys for getting that up and available for order right after the live stream. So thank you so much for watching. See you guys next time.